To continue with our review of Martin Scorsese's production designers, let's look at another look of riches in America, only not at the turn of the century, but about 60 years later when Martin Scorsese did Casino. So here we have a more streamlined version of wealth and excess as seen in this vanishing point of golden neon above De Niro as he stands managing this casino, having that red motif that Scorsese has already shown that he likes. Here, I think this is a wonderful picture of, of how we're going to juxtapose in a set decorative element people who are ostensibly on a date in, a, in an ostensibly romantic setting, and yet they are clearly alienated. But we've done this not only with the actors, but with the art department set decorations lending their hand. The heart-shaped table, I think it's wonderful, the heart-shaped table with its, with its cool white linen, with that white flower motif, little juxtaposed with red, gives us this sense that romance really isn't in the offing. It's, it's way too cold to be an offing. Even with that red juxtaposition in the background and with the outfits, the outfits surround that red in darkness, dark clothes, dark booth. I think it's a wonderful example of set de decoration um, giving us the mood of what's going on between these two people in this movie, Casino. Here in Casino, another magnificent example of what Scorsese's doing, looking at America at that time, in this, in this late 60s, early 70s America, where these people are trying to attain wealth, they're trying to climb the ladder, but it's, it's hard because it's hard to break through the class distinctions, and so we go to Vegas and we try our best, and here we have this woman who we can see in this lower middle class outfit. It's, 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 it's cotton, not very, not very rich looking outfit, against that silk pillowcase, against that silk sheet and that's in the bed in the bed setting there and so the silk of the bed against that dead dumpy cotton says it all it says somebody's trying to get to the silk land but caught there on the floor of the dead beige here we have our gangsters having a meeting in this very rich setting in the casino setting we have the Art Deco lights arched over. We have the Japanese silk uh, screen in the background. All pinks, slight violets and purples. It's, it's very much royalty the way they conceive it. They conceive it, the silks, the pinks, the steely lights, the, f the, the glinting glass, the golden, um, uh, you know, table legs, everything showing money, money, money. But look, to juxtapose, juxtapose the dream against the reality, here they have the cheap Chinese food laid out on the table. It's a wonderful piece of set decoration showing what they want to aspire to and where they're really at. Another wonderful set decorative moment here where we have the newly rich playing with their gold trinkets, their jewelry, against the gold ormolu wall settings and the gold filigree above the head headboard and then and the flower pattern again, the violets and the blues in the background. The, the gold on the uh, lamp base. It's just the, 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 the sense of bathing themselves in luxury, but it seems kind of like trumpery in a way. It's not real luxury. It's like quickly quickly gained, quickly lost in that, in that, in that furry blanket. Everything is, is very much newly attained and um, unreal. This, the man's hideout, the place where we pay, play poker, uh, the man cave, as we might say, in Vegas, is perfect in the way it's designed to be dark and masculine. Not much light, uh, trophies, some religious imagery, the marlin against the wall. It's a sporting man's very much a man's world here with the poker table and everything else, and yet there's the dark tone to it, uh, kind of foreshadowing what's going to take place. In Gangs of New York, which was designed by uh, Dante Ferretti, who uh, was production designer of Scorsese over many movies, I, I like the way he's done this um, 19th century look at America, early 19th century, with everything being basically a wood motif, 
but he's got the dead butchery here, the dead carcass of the butchery, the white deadness juxtaposed with the red blood, the kind of red brick. So it's a nice death, white, passionate red balance that's, that, that Scorsese uses throughout his movies. Dante Ferretti was a production designer, also an aviator, with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio playing Howard Hughes for Martin Scorsese. And I love this set as far as set decoration goes because we have the uh, very sleek, copper, relaxed fit suit that Howard Hughes is wearing in this, in this abundantly green, tropical-looking bathroom. It's supposed to be the, and it's just bursting with, with lushness. But look at how he is juxtaposed against the urinals. It's like Howard Hughes and the urinals are out of place and at sync at the same time. Even in his ranchero hideaway, the Howard Hughes look looks cold. It looks again alien. It's like no one lives there. It's got everything's new. And it's got green, and green is this kind of interesting color in movies because it's like the green apple in Snow White. It's the witch's apple. It's, it's a poisonous thing. It's not really. If you overdo it, it's not. It's not giving you this this lush living feeling. It's, it's tainting things in a kind of a poisonous hue. And, and you can see that here. We got the warmth of the browns and everything, but something about this green is off-putting. Whereas this blue of the blueprints that uh, DiCaprio is kicking and bashing against the chairs and everything, a wonderful set decorator's dream of, of just using objects to create motion and action and explosion. Um, but the idea that he's a, an aviator kicking this blue around is a wonderful uh, set decorator's motif. And this is nice, another Scorsese moment here with DiCaprio and Nicholson, but I, I think what I want to show here is because Scorsese is, is kind of uh, not obsessed, but certainly interested in class, here we have this uh, nouveau riche look where we've got the expensive drawings on the wall, and we've got the the, uh, the expensive leather chairs, and, and, and but it's very spare, it's very modern, it's not it's not inherited wealth. It's not something that's a handed down from parents and, and grandparents. This is all nouveau riche, recently acquired, tubular, uh, sleek, uh, something we bought just two weeks ago, as opposed to this look with DiCaprio in this in this room here with the with the 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 Persian carpet and 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 the and the, and the ceiling that looks like it, it was it was almost crafted by hand, and, and you've got the lamps with the fringes and the, the deep red chairs. Everything here looks like inherited wealth. This looks like a dynasty as opposed to somebody who's just recently acquired wealth. All done by the set decorators. As in this scene here in The Departed, one of Scorsese's movies with DiCaprio again, we have um, a nice touch. I just want to point this out with the set decorators. Putting the United We Stand sticker behind his head there, showing that this is a union bar. This is a working class bar. We know by the look of the guy and everything, but... Set decks add just that little touch. Whether we catch it or not, it helps to give this scene, whether it's the rack of bottles uh, descending or ascending in, in the serrated rows or not, it gives us just enough to give us a feeling that this is a workman's bar. And this is a wonderful scene at the end of the movie, Departed, where we have Matt Damon dead on the floor. And look at his apartment. Set decorators, a uh, wonderful vision of a person who has just moved into an environment that really doesn't have any of his stamp on it. The newly acquired equipment, the bare walls, everything looks barren and cold, empty, not yet lived in. And with the food, the, 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 the croissants kind of scattered towards us with the milk and everything, even the food looks bland. Here was Shutter Island, uh, another... DiCaprio movie that Scorsese made. Uh, this this is going into the realm of weird dimension, fantasy, and mystery, and we and, and green. The, 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 we're talking about this green tone as being an alienated, not really comfortable tone. But look at this here with the wallpaper and the floral dress and the floral curtains again. This floral pattern that Scorsese loves so much. But it's all green. It's all reflecting green background. And and the world outside here looks much more in, inviting than being inside here. Here it looks a little sickly. Um, and in the movie here, we have DiCaprio 
taking a shower, we can see uh, just by the color of the wall as he takes a shower. This is not a warm, invigorating place to take a shower. This is a spooky place to take a shower. And at the end, when all dreams or dimensions uh, or dementia comes together, we have a wonderful use of art department texturing the light with this falling leaf kind of uh, reflective paper that just floats throughout the scene. We got the warm tones in her dress and his and, and his suit, but this 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 kind of blue black glittery um, almost dead butterfly look floating through the room is a wonderful way to texture light, reflect the light, give it some depth, but also give it this kind of neurological um, fr uh, you know, fizzing out of, 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 of consciousness. It's just a wonderful decorator image, but it's also another, another wonderful dark image juxtaposed with their, their warm love that Scarcity had the production designer provide for the movie. Here we have Hugo, which, as everyone knows, was this big uh, bid for art direction. Um, here we're all children in this movie, looking at the bigger than the larger than life um, toys that were, were caught in here. Uh, whether we go to the, even in the bookstore in this movie, we go to the bookstore, it's not just a bookstore, it's not just a library, it's this explosion of variety, different colored books, and it's a gold and the red. It's this candy store of literature, and we're dwarfed by the abundance of it all. Here, when we run into the homunculus in the movie, another machine that's going to um, uh, be on the same level as the big clock, set deck isn't concerned with the machine so much. That's special um, effects and everything. But in the background, they have to make sure that the gears and the pipes and the and the and and all the 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 steel is put together so it reflects this world where. Uh, Things are coming together as, as machines and robots and homunculi. Again, reflected by the pipes, this underworld of the mechanical, um, uh, what, what, mechanical sublunar sphere that, that runs the glittery exterior world, the, the kind of like deep inner workings of the world with pipes and wires and gears, so much the dark uh, mechanical um, interior of the, the glittering world we live in, so much the Hugo uh, world where these kids are exploring the, um, the background to the foreground of our world, which is the um, set decoration department writ large, as we see here with the gears. It's, uh, it's almost, it's, this is a metaphor for set decorations. They supply the gears, uh, the background to make the, the clock and everything else spin that give us the time in the movie. And his most recent effort, um, Wolf of Wall Street, Scorsese uh, he has uh, DiCaprio pitching a midget against a, uh, a bullseye here. But what I want you to look at is look at the this, look at the, the the ceiling here. The ceiling. This is this is set deck again. We want to see something that makes this this midget fly at us with this vectoral speed. So we have this kind of um, vanishing point of tiles on the ceiling and then the spacing of the lights to give us a sense of motion and depth that um, is not only period but also adds some dynamism to the movie just like this carpet here. This carpet isn't just a beige flat carpet, isn't just a flat colored carpet. It's got this abstract swirling of lines that enlivens it, gives us energy just like these mad Wall Street people coked up and trying to take over the world. Finally, when things calm down for that brief moment in this movie, and money finds romance, we have this motif of pink, soft romance, the bassinet, the easy chair, the cushion on the easy chair, the carpet, the dress, everything, the shoes coming together in this pink, soft, uh, fuzzy, cuddly world that's so different from the rest of the movie, but in this set decorators, quick image gives us this moment of quiet respite and romance.